Welcome to our video series on more advanced eBay market research techniques. In this video, we'll explore the TerraPeak Category Item Browse option. Now, let's start taking a look through the Category submenu. And there are three options Item Browse, Trend, and Top Sellers. Let's start with Item Browse. OK, in the first place here, you're presented with basically every category and the first level subcategories on eBay. They're all listed here. And again, if you're subscribed, you can change eBay sites here but let's stick with ebay.com for this example for now. And you can sort what you see here by total sales, total listings, and so on. So basically, it's asking you in the first place whether you're more interested in what categories and subcategories had the most sales, or the most listings, or the highest number of sold listings, or the highest number of bids, the sell-through percentage, the sell-through percentage is, of course, the number of auctions that ran divided by the number of auctions that were actually completed successfully. So if all the auctions that ran in a subcategory finished successfully, then the sell-through rate would be 100%. So what percentage of the auctions in that category actually finished successfully? That's the sell-through rate or sell-through percentage. Then which categories have the most bids for listing? and which categories have the highest average price. So let's stick with total sales for now. And you can choose 1, 7, or 30 days for this. So let's click on Go for those choices to take effect. OK, and what it presents you with, over on the left, it gives you the top-level categories. And with this color key of red being the highest for whatever you've chosen here, so red is the highest for total sales, and gray is the lowest for total sales. So the category with high total sales, clothing, shoes, and accessories, and low for total sales, crafts, DVDs and movies, entertainment memorabilia. OK, this gives you a top-level view. If you want to dive down into more subcategories, you have these listings here. So Antiques, which according to this color coding scheme is low for potential sales. So of the subcategories, Antiques Classical American is low. And Architectural and Garden. That subcategory has low total sales during that time period, and so on. So total sales isn't all that useful by itself if you're looking for a profitable eBay business. Also, some high sales categories are very low margin. So that's something to think about. For example, a high sales total category is laptops and notebooks, but how much margin there is in each sale, I doubt that there's very much profit margin in each sale. That's true especially because if there are a lot of sales, that means there's a lot of competition, which also takes profits down even more. Let's just have a quick look through some other hot categories. OK, CDs. That's making a lot of sales over the last 30 days. Or Apple iPod MP3 player, not surprisingly making a lot of sales over the last 30 days. So it gives you a quick overview of the categories and subcategories. And so let's change this. Let's see which subcategories have a high result for total listings. I would think there would be a lot of duplication with total listings and total sales. OK, interestingly, there doesn't seem to be too much duplication. For example, laptops and notebooks is now gray. 
so low total listings, and maybe actually an important factor regarding this is that because notebooks and laptops are quite high-value items, several hundred dollars at least per auction probably, there will maybe be fewer total listings, even though the sales value overall could be quite high. Whereas lower-priced items, such as CDs, would probably have more listings, but obviously it's a much lower price per listing. CDs are still considered, still giving a high ranking here, so there's a little duplication, but not duplication in every instance. Okay, other options. Let's have a look at sell-through rate. Which categories and subcategories have the highest sell-through rate over the last 30 days? And okay, laptops and notebooks are back again. They have a high sell-through rate. And interestingly, CDs have now gone gray, so there's obviously a low sell-through rate for CDs. But how can you use this information? Sell-through rate is, of course, very important. For example, you need to take into consideration, out of every 10 auctions that you run, how many of them are actually going to be successful. You have to factor that in, because obviously you're going to have higher auction running costs if you have a lot of auctions that don't end successfully. Then you're going to have to factor that in with the price per sale and the profits per sale for you. So perhaps a broad way to look at it is that categories that have a lower sell-through rate, you'll probably be interested then in a good profit margin, because if you have to list the same item several times to sell it, then your profit margin is going to go down and down. But if you have a decent profit margin, you're still going to come out ahead there. But if it's a category with a low profit margin and a low sell-through rate, then you'll probably struggle. So this is really helpful for finding out why current auctions aren't doing as well as they could be because it gives you a good overall view of how well things are doing in that category you might be selling in or the categories you might be selling in. It's also great for market research for new potential products to sell and markets to sell to. Again, if it has a low sell-through rate, such as here, wine, but maybe there's enough profit margin there to maybe make it worthwhile. So you'll have to dig deeper to see whether it's actually worth your while. And if there is a low profit margin, how are they making their money? Are they just trying to introduce customers to their company on eBay, then following up with them via email or through regular mail or however else they may follow up? Do they follow up with their customers by email or post or telephone or however else, after the initial eBay sale to get them to buy more, and by sending them catalogs, for example, and so on. So you'll have to take all of this into consideration. Now, let's take a quick look at bids per listing. Okay, the high end of bids per listing is once again laptops and notebooks, interestingly. So, quite a few bids for laptops and notebooks, and quite a few bids for jewelry and timepieces. So, maybe one rule of thumb, though it isn't a hard and fast rule, but it is another thing to think about, if you can find any category where total sales and total bids is high, where sell-through rate is high, and maybe where average price is high, or even bids per listing is high, those are all good signs that there's money to be made in those categories. But again, that's just a very broad overview, so you would have to dig deeper. But it really is a quick way for you to fix your current auctions if you're having problems, because perhaps you're putting them in the wrong category, or it's just a difficult category for these reasons, and you may need to reconsider how you sell them, or even if you're selling them at all. So it's also great for finding potential new categories for selling. It will give you a broad overview of eBay and where possible opportunities lie. And then you can dig deeper into certain subcategories and see if there's money to be made there and how you can break into that market. Okay, we're still just looking at the category submenu, item browse. Let's dig a little deeper now and click on a hot category, laptops and notebooks. And now we're getting into deeper subcategories. And it tells you here which are the hot ones, the high value ones, in this case bids per listing, but again you can change that if you wish. So high, 
not surprisingly, Dell, and the next one down is Fujitsu, then Gateway is kind of in the middle, or in fact toward the low end, Acer is pretty much in the middle, and Alienware, Averitech, AST, those are all low. So low bids per listing for those. Let's take a look further down. And Sony is orange, Toshiba yellow. Orange is low, so surprisingly Sony is low, while Toshiba is fairly high at yellow for bids per listing. Then we can dive in even deeper. So if we click on Dell on this link here, and now it's just showing this particular category at an item level. It's showing you the individual items. So once you have an idea of the categories, you want to dig in deeper. Then you can start looking through the items here and seeing if you can compete. Okay, taking a look here. And initially, I'm a little bit surprised to see a $32,000 laptop. But just as an example, it went from a starting bid of $0.99 cents up to $32,500, and it's been sold successfully, and it ended on November 2nd, 2007. Okay, I've clicked through to the auction, and the winning bid, as Tara Peak was telling me, is $32,500. I can't actually explain that, and haven't looked into it deeply enough to see how a laptop got to that point, so that's perhaps not a particularly helpful example for really researching the market. But maybe... Okay, I clicked on the end price column heading to actually sort the list in ascending order. So, right at the beginning, we see the auctions that didn't end successfully. And you can click on any of these column headings to sort by that, or you can sort by number of bids, by starting price, end price. And okay, there are over 1,600 pages of results here. So it could take quite a while to go through these. But really, you can see how the category item browse functionality works. It gives you a broad overview of the categories and subcategories of eBay. It tells you by total sales, total listings, total sold listings, and so on, which categories are doing well for those and which aren't doing so well. Then you can even dig down deeper to see all the listings if you wish, or of course you can go directly to eBay to see them or view them within the TerraPeak interface here. For example, let's say that we've decided that selling laptops is potentially a good idea for me, and I want to look into this more deeply to see if it's genuinely viable for me. Then, you would spend some time here just getting a feel for the market, finding out what's selling and what isn't selling. Then you can start piecing together what's actually selling well, and then of course it becomes a question of whether you can source it at a price that makes sense to you where you can make a profit. Or, if you aren't making a profit, whether you're prepared to just break even or go slightly into the red on the initial sale to gain a customer so you can continue to sell to them in the future. Okay, just to wrap up this example, I've sorted the item results here by the number of bids. So the top one is 122 bids, with a starting price of a penny and an end price of $255. And okay, there's the item. Then the next one is 99 bids, and so on. So as I mentioned, this feature of TerraPeak is good for giving you broad research, but further features of this service, which I'll come to in later videos, allow you to dive in even deeper and present you with very useful and very actionable information much more quickly. But as already mentioned, looking at it very broadly, this feature is a good way to get a feel for categories, which categories might be good for you to sell existing products in, or which categories may be good for you to move into and start selling in.